It's time for another Pokemon Smekamas episode. You guys wanted to see it? I wanted to design it. Let's bring these illustrations to life. Nexum, are you there? Nexum? Well, that's just great. He promised to go through some of the skills for armor creation and mech armor designs. In fact, the part I really wanted to learn how to do the most today was how to create the power cores that he uses. It's taken months to get him to agree to let me build a mech armor and learn what to do. Although he did agree all of a sudden, but I didn't think he ditched me on the first lesson. It was at that moment. A light scanned the kid and a monitor came down from the ceiling with a message appearing. It was Nexum. Well, that's interesting. A video message. I wonder what happened. Hey kid. Yeah, you. If you're watching this, then I've had to uh, step out for an errand. Yeah, an errand. Anyway, I'm going to have to put the main part of today's mech building lesson on hold till I can get back to you. Can't have trade secrets recorded and whatnot, in case somebody gets their hands on it. So, I have a few tales to tell you, and when I get back, I'll let you pick one of the rather cool and funky alien devices I've collected to using your armor that we're building. Well, maybe. Anywho, instead I thought I'd keep up with the uh, theme of what's happening, so I'm going to run through three of my newest mech armors from clients that, well, appeared out of nowhere. Literally, out of nowhere. I mean, I was there working on a nice new gadget to add to one of my personal armors, where there was a flash of light behind me. Next thing I knew, there was a rather strange looking gal with one of those Pokemon creatures. She must have come from the universe I tend to go to for ideas for that series of mech armors I create. Well, that's my working theory anyway. I did scan her and find traces of that dimension's unique, what's it called? You know, the unique factor for identifying the universe. Um, quantum signature? Universal frequency? Well, potato potato. I'll just call it Universal ID. Gotta keep this simple. Either way, this uh, gal had a Pokemon with her that I've not seen before. Found out it was one called Miascarada, a grass type Pokemon with a flair for performance. Looks a little bit like an interesting magician. After a bit of a chat, my rather unexpected visitor decided to purchase a mech armor but wanted to look quite close to the Pokemon in terms of looks and feel. That was easy enough to do. Though, I had to come up with some form of easy remote control for the floating device. That can, well, it can shoot energy blasts out. That are able to stun its target. Not too fancy, but it was rather fun to do. The main challenge of this armor, though, was creating some way for it to grow some form of plant-type attacks. That's what the yellow glowing orbs in the armor are. I found this device a while back that can stimulate plants in an area and promote massive growth. Took me a while to get the energy from these orbs to target certain plants and control the direction they grow, as well as the speed at which they can. Some of my finest work, if you ask me. The young lady was pleased with the armor, so pleased that she gave me a few leaf stones as a bonus. It's not much to me in this dimension, but they are rather useful in the Pokemon universe. Also gave me an idea for a rather cool mech armor design or feature I could use in the future. For those of you who don't know, not many, but it does depend what dimension you're from. Leaf stones allow certain Pokemon to evolve. That said, once the mech armor was finished, the gal paid in full, which was kind of a rewarding moment. Then I sent her back to the dimension, with the armor and Pokemon in tow. Took a bit of effort and used a bit more power from the workshop and interdimensional doohickey on my arm, but I believe she got back safely. If not, at least it has a rather cool and awesome mech armor to help her survive. But I'm sure she's fine. Well, that was a rather fun design and interesting to see Pokemon. Though, I have the feeling that Nexum's dimensional travel skills seem to leave a lot to be desired. It's a wonder he ever makes it back in one piece, or makes it back at all. That was the first one, and a rather interesting one at like that. But it's time for the next mech armor in this, uh, this one's more colorful. I say that as the Pokemon it's based on has a rather vibrant look to it. Although, well, I had to charge the fella extra for damages to the workshop. Not entirely his fault, but at the same time, charging a few extras once in a while doesn't hurt anybody. Still, I have to put food on the table and whatnot. Damages? What damages? There's no sign of any repair in here. What the hell's he talking about? I guess you're thinking, what damages? 
I can't see any damages. Isn't that right, kid? How the hell did he know what I was thinking? What's going on? Hey, kid, take a good look around. And you'll see if you can spot it. Go on, I'll give you a minute. The kid looked around the room. He was unable to see any form of damage or anything that looked like it had been repaired recently. A look of confusion started to appear on the kid's face. Hey, kid, still not found it? Nexum pointed his finger upwards. Look up. See it now? The kid slowly tilted his head back and looked up towards the ceiling. What the hell happened here? There's a giant, rather shabby patch in the roof? What the hell could have caused damage up there? I guess you're wondering what happened, kid. Well, it's a bit of an ongoing routine with the unexpected visitors I had while you were away. Again, this rather simple and eccentric fella came out of that Pokemon universe. Appeared out of nowhere. However... They spotted me working on a mecha and decided that it'd be amazing and perfect to have one. That matched their Pokemon. I tell you, kid, if you want to start a business making mecha armors, head to this Pokemon universe. There's definitely something in it. Maybe I could retire here and uh, make a nice hobby, earning a little bit of cash here and there with some rather interesting armor designs. Anywho, where was I? Oh yeah, this guy wanted a mecha armor based on his favorite Pokemon. So I said, not a problem if you can pay. But I'm going to need to see this Pokemon to place the armor on. Normally, that's not an issue, but this fella, as I said, he was a bit simple and eccentric. I barely finished my sentence when he threw out one of those Pokeball things, and the next thing I knew, boom! There's a giant hole in my roof. The room is filled with a giant, and I mean a giant Pokemon. Believe you me, kid, I was not impressed. The fella looked at me and apologized, saying he'll fix the damage. I just told them I'll charge him extra and make the repairs to fix it myself. Appreciated the offer, but I kind of was in a bit of a rush and I wanted to finish a project for a client who wanted me to look at this armor they had uh, found, seeing if I could repair it. Some form of space marine, I think. But that's a story for another time. This fella was rather big and sturdy, and this Pokemon was something called a Great Tusk. Apparently a newly discovered form of Pokemon, known as a Paradox Pokemon. Rather cool looking, but I decided to let this guy have an armor that reflected the strength of the beast. I mean, it was a literal titan. So this guy's armor was built to look like a bit of a powerhouse. Kind of gave me a Viking feel to it, so I made it look like some kind of heavy duty armor. With a bit of a mane around the neck and collar. A bit inspired by the armor I was looking at in a way, but the colors were nice and interesting from the Pokemon. And I think it came out okay. If I do say so myself, it's still a rather cool looking armor. Not my best work though, I was still a little bit nifted at the damage done to the roof. Again, I had to send this one back to that Pokemon dimension. You'd think one was strange, but two? Maybe it's just coincidence. Well, oh, kid, looks like I have time to tell you about one more armor that I created, and this is a bit more along the lines of my first armors. That said, I think I've been hanging around with Erinfold, and it started to rub off on me a little. When this guy ended up in the workshop with a Tyranitar? That's right, one of those big green armoured Godzilla-like lizard Pokemon. It's one of those, uh, what is it? Su a pseudo-legendary Pokemon, I think? Not quite legendary, but close enough to it. Anyway, the guy who had this Pokemon was as fiery as Erinfold. And both he and his Pokemon's attitudes reminded me of my good old pal. I guess it's due to the fact that both the uninvited guests in his Pokemon were battle junkies. I could tell the minute they caught my eye that they loved to fight. Had to quickly jump into a mech armor as without a moment's notice the pair attacked me. Completely unfazed by the fact that they were in another place without a clue of what's going on. Kinda had a bit of respect for them but no one, and I mean no one, gets away with attacking Nexum here in his own workshop and on my own turf. So I went toe to toe with Tyranitar for a few rounds. Kinda wish I hadn't though. The armor I was in took more than its fair share of damage but it did do the job and the pair calmed down enough to speak. The guy was in awe at the armor, even though it was battered and dented. Guess I impressed him with going toe to toe with his Pokemon. He instantly wanted an armor for himself, and after a while made me an offer too good to pass up. He let me study his Pokemon Tyranitar for a while in exchange, and he got an armor that was fitting for a battle junkie in nature. I made this one as tough as the armor of his Pokemon. This armor could withstand a building falling on it without any damage at all. It was designed to take a beating. I also used some state of the art muscle fiber optics in the design. I'll explain more in detail next time, kid, but these fibers increase the guy's strength in the armor 10, maybe 20 fold. He loved it. He was able to spar his Pokemon now as well as take part in much more intensive battles. When he got back to his own universe, of course. After a little while completing the study and fine tuning his armor, 
took a reading of the universal ID, and you'll never guess what. It was the same universe as the other two visitors I had. I mean, seriously, what's going on here? Is somebody sending them to me for fun? Or maybe there's a portal to my workshop in that dimension. Who knows? All I know is that free is definitely not a coincidence. That or the universe is trying to tell me something. I guess I'll have to visit that dimension after I get back from my errand to see what's happening exactly. Don't get me wrong, I love designing and building mech armors and the Pokemon ones are some of the most fun designs, but where the hell are all these Pokemon fanatics? Yeah, I guess that's what they could be called, Pokemon fanatics. Where the hell are they all appearing from? I mean seriously, I just don't get it. Is there a target in my head? Or has the multiverse decided <laughs> to steal a phrase from a sharp tongued mech armor creator? I'm the best arm mech armor creator this side. Nah, skip that. Any side of the multiverse. If that's the case, I might need to uh, up my prices, seeing as much more business will be coming my way. Anyway, gotta go kid, otherwise my errand won't get done. Here's a bit of homework for you. There's a box over there with your name on it. Take the box and create a gauntlet from what's inside of it. Do your best kid, and try to impress me. have it our pokemon mech armors for today's episode hope you guys enjoyed how they all came out not really sure which one's my favorite but i do like the color schemes of all of them and to be honest they look quite cool so be sure to let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below as with all the artwork on the channel high-res versions are available to download on patreon it's the best place to get them and it's a lot cheaper than teespring so be sure to check that out there's a link in the description and potentially a link in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out some of the other Pokemon Mech Armor episodes I've got on the channel, where Nexon talked about the inspiration on it. I've also got some D&D Mech Armors and a whole host of strange, wacky things for you to have a look at. Anyway, stay safe, everybody. Catch you next time.